Today we're dealing with money, food, fitness, fashion, and relationships. So stay tuned because this is The Rachel Cree Show. Oh, summer is coming to an end. Can you believe it? Time just flies. And I know summer for me, I jump off every bandwagon that I was on, everything that I was like, oh, this is going to be so scheduled and so great and so perfect. Everything just kind of goes crazy during the summer. And so I decided for this episode, we need to talk about getting back on track and being healthy in all different kinds of areas in our life. Everything from fitness to nutrition, fashion, and even our relationships. So this episode, I'm going to bring some friends on to talk about each one of these subjects. But first, of course, it's The Rachel Cruz Show. So we're going to talk about how to be healthy with your money. Yes. Again, this is something that so many of us, we kind of just lag and it's like, oh, it's just summer. It's not a big deal. We don't really look at the budget and focus. But now, you guys, summer's almost over. So it's time to get back on track when it comes to our money. And the number one thing, I can't stress this enough, that is going to help you win with money and be intentional is doing a budget. It's like the drum I beat <laughs> through this whole series because this is such a big deal. Doing the budget means that you are being purposeful. You are being intentional and you're telling your money what to do. It's really the only way that you're gonna win financially. And so when you're looking at a budget quickly, there's a few percentages for you to know when you're laying out a budget because your budget in a perfect world is going to be a zero-based budget, which means your income for each month minus all of your expenses equals zero. So every dollar coming in is assigned to a category. So here are a few categories to get you started if you've never budgeted before. You always wanna start with giving and you're gonna give around 10 to 15% of your income. You're gonna save some money, around 10 to 15%. Housing, so your mortgage or your rent should be around 25 to 35% of your take-home pay. Utilities, five to 10%. Food, 10 to 15%. Transportation, 10 to 15%. Health, five to 10%. Insurance, 10 to 25%. Personal, 10 to 15%. And recreation, five to 10%. Okay, rule number one when you hear all of this, these are recommended percentages. Recommended. So some of you living in San Francisco or may have a different percentage than those of you living in Schwartzburg, North Dakota. Okay, like it's going to be different. It's going to be different. So again, these are recommended percentages. And rule number two, the order is important. So we always want to be giving first, no matter where you are in your money journey, whether you're getting out of debt, you're saving up for an emergency fund, I don't care where you are you need to be giving something. I always tell people to give a little until you can give a lot. Because when you are giving, what's happening is emotionally, you are starting to live your life with an open hand. When you start to let go of your money and help other people and you're putting your money towards something that you yourself are passionate about when it's helping someone else, what that does is that affects every other aspect of your life. You start to become more selfless versus selfish. And let me tell you, in our world today, this is a very important quality to have because my goal for you is through this whole thing is to win with money. And I want you to build wealth. I want you to be able to have an awesome lifestyle and enjoy your life. But if you're not giving when you have a little bit, it's gonna be very difficult for you to give when you have a lot. So start now. Also, you wanna be saving second. You wanna make sure that you are saving some type of money every month. Those of you working to save up for an emergency fund, maybe it's for that. And also we have recommended percentages for things like insurance. And this is really important because this, this can factor into your life when you're creating your budget because life insurance is something that everyone needs. It is a must if you have a family, no matter where you are on your debt-free journey. So some of you might be thinking, oh, I can't afford life insurance right now but you may not know how affordable term life insurance really is. So for instance, a healthy 35-year-old husband and wife, each shopping for half a million dollars in coverage, can pay as little as $41 a month combined for a 20-year policy. Winston and I, we trust Xander Insurance to cover our family's needs and cannot recommend them highly enough. Their team will find the best rates for your family too, making sure that you have the best coverage available. So make sure to go to xander.com or click the link below to get started today. It only takes a few minutes to set this up 
and it will give you peace of mind knowing that your family's future is financially secure and it is totally, totally worth it. So again, those are some things to remember as you're looking at the budget. And again, your budget is something that you need to do if you wanna win financially. It can be difficult for some of us, especially if you're a free spirit like me, but staying on track and being intentional is so key. So something I've been learning in life and what I try to push myself to do in every season is to do something that is uncomfortable for me, something new. And well, I tried something new. As we're talking about health, you know me, working on this workout train. I'm in and out, off the train, on the train. Sometimes trains stop, sometimes going full speed. We just don't know what's happening with Rachel when it comes to working out. So I decided earlier this year, I'm gonna work out. And so remember I bought the app. If you didn't listen to that story, go back a few episodes. It was just so sad. So bought this workout app, it didn't work out. And then someone was talking about, oh, running. And you could do something totally different. You don't have to go to the gym, you could start running. And in fact, you could run the half marathon. So everyone at Ramsey Solutions was like all on board. Everyone was like gonna run this half marathon, all 700 something people. I mean, not true. Half the people were like, no, I'm not going to. But I was like, you know what, I can do this. I mean, running a marathon for me seemed impossible. I was like, or a half marathon. <laughs> Let's not get too crazy. No marathon talking around here. We're talking half marathon. But I thought, I, I bet if I put my mind to this, I could do this. And it was uncomfortable, I didn't want to. In fact, I hate running like hate running. For some reason, I thought this was a brilliant idea. I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna train like I am with my money. I'm intentional and I write things down. I'm gonna write down my schedule and I'm gonna train for this marathon. So I went, of course, bought the good running shoes. They talked me into buying like 14 pairs of these like squishy socks. So I was like, sure, why not? So I like went and got all the gear. I looked the part and I was ready. And I almost died like running a mile. I was like, okay, I can do this. So I had to like run and stop, run and stop, you know, all that. But I was building up my momentum and I was two and a half weeks into my training and I had a four mile run on Saturday. And I was like, I'm gonna go to the park in this beautiful park outside of Nashville and the loop is exactly a, a mile. So I was like, oh good, I just need to run that four times. It's gonna be great. So I'm running the first mile and I just kept thinking, this is just not smart. Why, why am I running? What am I doing this for? And then I got to mile two. I was really struggling and out ahead, saw my car and I thought, I could get in my car right now and I could quit. So I did, I quit. Got to my car, I drove home. Winston was like, how was, how was your long run? I was like, what long run? Oh, my two mile run and I quit the marathon. I'm done. And it felt so good, you guys. So remember that in your life, when you're doing stupid things, like buying things you can't afford. Don't do that, no. When you're living not intentionally, when you're not funding retirement, when you're doing things that are not wise, stop doing that and do smart things because then you become very happy in life like me. And another thing that is very smart to do is to track your progress in life. So what we have for you are three goal trackers to help you get started and say, I'm going to track what I'm going to do next. So we have goal trackers for baby steps one, which is saving $1,000. Baby step two, getting out of debt. So smart, so smart. And baby step three, which is to save three to six months of expenses. So make sure to click the link in the description below. Download those goal trackers. Start doing smart stuff. Quit doing dumb stuff. Okay, our relationship from parenting to marriage, to friendships, and so the relationship expert and my good friend, Dr. Les Parrott, is here to join us. So thanks, Les, for being on. Always good to be with you, Rachel. This is gonna be fun to talk about. So the big common denominator in relationships, especially with marriage, is that you know you have a man and a woman and they communicate differently. We're like two totally different beings, right? So I'm curious from your side of studying this for years and years and years, decades and decades, how men and women communicate differently? Well, I love this question because communication is the lifeblood of a relationship. You're, the health of a relationship will rise or fall based on how well the two of you communicate, whether that's in marriage or friendship or anything else. And so understand how to kind of bridge that gender gap when it comes to communication really comes down to understanding uh, one word that's, that's um, for men is so vitally important and one word for women that is so vitally important. Mm -hmm. And that is, and this is based on decades of research, by the way, 
a woman by the name of Deborah Tan and spearheaded this research, incredible finding. She basically found that the number one goal for a man in conversation is what we refer to as report talk. Okay. In other words, a guy, we like to be in the know. We want the report. We want to be brought up to speed. We want the information. It's just that we don't need all the fluff. We don't need all the bunny trails. Uh, we did, And that's why women get so frustrated because your man will say, get to the point. You know, what's the bottom line? Right? <laughs> right, Does the story right. have an end, right? And we get frustrated because a guy is, he's wanting the information. He just wants it kind of in bullet points. Does that make sense? Does that ring true for you in your own marriage? Yeah, I would say so for sure, right? I mean, it's like if there's a problem or an issue, it's like, well, here's the problem, here's the issue. It's like, yeah, right. and it sounds like a problem that our friends have had. You know, like I can just kind of go off <laughs> on this whole tangent. So yeah, totally. It, so the exactly. report to talk, yep. Yeah, and, and so your husband's going, okay, big deal about the neighbors right now. We're talking about us. Just kind of stay on topic here, you know? Yes. So we want the report. And I'll literally sometimes come home at the end of the day and say to Leslie, hey, Give me the report. I'll literally say that. In other words, you know, how are the boys? Do they have homework? Do, what's for dinner? Did you get the mail? Give me the information I need to function in this home tonight. I want yes. the report. Yep. Not so for women. Uh, women have a, a compulsive need for what the researchers call not report talk, but rapport. Rapport talk. In other words, that feeling of being connected, that there's rapport. And so the verbiage, the words kind of take a back seat in many ways, and we're talking about big generalizations here, yep. but the words kind of take a back seat for, for women compared to men because they want to know, are we on the same page? Hey, are we connecting right now? Yep. And that's why you'll see women sometimes, you know, as friends, like in a church foyer or something, and they lean in and they hold hands and they're talking, <laughs> you know, and uh, men are like, really? You know, and like men are like, you know, what? how was your golf game? You know, and they're talking right, about right. something deep and dark and, and heavy, you know, and because it's all about making that web of connectedness between us. So those are the two big fundamentals in communication between men and women. And if you want to have a healthy relationship, you've really got to understand those two needs because we can be at cross purposes if if we don't. Yes, and those two things can function even in a friendship, right? If a guy girl friendship, or even I think between even you know. Um, a dad and his daughters, or a mom and her sons, right? I mean, like all aspects of life, you can kind of function on those two words, report and rapport, and over, generally speaking, like you said, it rings true, and it really does. And I think women, and I'm assuming you would agree with this, you know, are more emotional beings overall, right? And so being able to gain that consensus I think it's so huge. I think about that with me and Winston, where I'm like, okay, I just need to know, like, how are you feeling right now? <laughs> like, I'll ask him that yeah. sometimes. I'm like, are you frustrated? Are you mad? Like, like what? what's the feeling? I need to know the feeling. Uh, because that right. does, that helps me, like, with my groundwork, with whatever we're about to talk about. Well, and, and we know from research, Rachel, that, that women are more tuned in to kind of the nonverbals. You guys have more words in your feeling vocabulary to describe emotions <laughs> compared to men. Men, relative to a woman, they're like, you know, you guys are like a walking thesaurus of emotions compared to most <laughs> men. And, you know, you ask most guys, how are you feeling? Fine. You know, I'm not hungry. I'm good, you know. Um, and so it's just there is that that gap. There's no doubt about that. But we can bridge it. There, you know, that's that's the good news. It, it's a lifetime of work, uh, whether yep. it's in friendships, family relationships or otherwise. But we can bridge that gap and make it much smaller for sure. That's so good. So just knowing overall the health of relationships so dependent on communication and knowing men and women communicate very differently and come at different approaches is so key to know. So I think that that's just a good overall understanding, uh, a nugget yeah. that we can for sure, for sure take away. The bridge to doing that is to clarify content and reflect feeling. That's what we both need to be doing on both sides of the equation is making sure we accurately understand each other and yeah. we're tuned into the emotional message of that for men and for women. And maybe that can sound more challenging for men, but it's really not because women, what women will sometimes do, Rachel, is project their feelings or their emotions onto their man and the guy goes, I guess so. I didn't know I was feeling that way until you told me I was, you know? Yes. Um, yes. And so, but that's the bridge. Clarify content, reflect feelings. I love it. So great. So smart. Les, thank you so much for being on. Always enjoy your wisdom. Thank you. Now we need to learn how to be healthy with our food. So let's head over to my kitchen. 
And another part about being healthy, of course, is our food. And so it's always healthier to eat at home when you're cooking at home. So I brought my friend Tanya Hi. for our cooking segment today. And we're gonna cook two meals from Home Chef. And Home Chef is a home delivery food service. And you've been using it for- Eight months now. Eight months, yes. You love it, don't you? I do love it. You get to choose from the meals. I don't just send you a random meal. So yes, they have great. actually like 18 options. Like vegetarian, fish, steak, chicken. Lots of options. All Fast of meals, meals you cook, all different things. So great. Okay, so the first meal that we're gonna put together is a lunch, which is so great. Because let's be honest, or I know when I'm home with my kids, I'm eating like peanut butter and jelly with them or turkey and cheese with yeah, them. Yeah, so these are so fast. This is mojito lime chicken salad. Oh, beautiful. Have you cooked this one yet? I haven't done this one. I've done a quick a five minute salad. Before. Okay, okay. And there's actually a lot of options. Yes, for lots of choices. The quick, the quick lunches, which mm -hmm. I love. Okay, so we chopped up some romaine lettuce. You chop up the lettuce, yes. but the chicken comes pre cooked. I know, which is so great. And these little spices. Yeah, we're supposed so to. So I'll let you. You stir that. Me stir that? Yeah, okay. you stir that. <laughs> it's great because these recipe cards make things so easy. Okay, what do we do? Love recipes. Okay, so stir it all, put it in. And honestly, this is just prepping. And just throw it all in. Which is so great. Roasted red peppers there. And it's your connection. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. This is dressing. Okay. Oh, dressing. Okay. Yes, Chipotle and ranch dress. And it comes all together. Yeah. Okay, you toss this out. I'm terrible at tossing salads. Well, I'm no expert, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and what I love about this for real though, you're a busy mom. I am. I'm a busy mom. And you, do, do you consider yourself a good cook? Like, did you enjoy no, cooking? No, listen, I mean, I cook for my family. I, but I was definitely like a tacos, spaghetti, meatloaf, mom, pizza, yes. pizza yes. mom. Pizza, pizza. And that's what's been so great is it's made me try all kinds of new meals. Yes, that you like, normally wouldn't. No, I, I normally like. wouldn't. Like my husband thinks he doesn't like onions and a lot of these have like finely chopped onions or shallots in them. And he doesn't even know they're there, but the flavor is amazing. So, so we've tried all kinds of new things, eating things we never knew we liked and definitely making things I never knew that I could cook. So yes, for sure. And it's so fun to compare like the before and after oh, to the yeah. picture. <laughs> because you really do, you're like a chef. It's pretty yeah. amazing. Great. I'm okay. a chef because I chopped the lettuce in this I know, one. that's right. That makes me chef. See, that looks good. Beautiful. <laughs> well done, Tanya. Well done. <laughs> All right, and the next meal is the hot honey salmon, which Yum. just smells delicious. So it takes a little bit longer to cook this, so we're not gonna do it today. We've already prepped one and did one. But what I love about, again, these little recipe cards, it gives you the time, it gives you when to cook, within the, like, the ingredients, like how many days you have for it to be in your refrigerator, which I like because the box, which is like a gift that keeps on giving. Yes, I love opening the box. I do yes. too, it's so fun. Okay. And it's got cooler bags in it and stuff when you get it. So, so it literally like preps you with everything. All of your ingredients, all of like the exact amount you need of each ingredient because I'm terrible at wasting things. Okay, when I, I watched the segment of you and your mom. Yes. Um, and it was like making you so nervous that she was like, Rachel, just throw some spices in there. These things are like pre-portioned for you. Everything. So you don't even have to measure them. Like yes. it's the exact right amount. And you're not wasting stuff because honestly, I have right now in my refrigerator, I was gonna cook a cilantro lime chicken thing and we decided to go out on a date night that night. And so the cilantro is like the most wilted, sad little thing you've ever seen. You know, because I just never ended up cooking it. Yeah. And so with this, I love it because it's like, okay, you have three days just enough and you're there. For and your yes, and you're not, you're not wasting it all. And then we have the salmon. So, so that's just an example of what you're gonna get because if you're like me, you're gonna look at that and be like, that's so intimidating. No, because look, we can make that and it looks just like So milk. great. So with this one, it's, your salmon and you sear it and bake it. Mm -hmm. And then you saute some zucchini, some tomatoes and green onion and you chop these and mix it all together. And yeah, there you have it. Delish. So good. Well, thanks Tanya for being here. Thanks for having this me. This was so fun. All right, you guys, if you want to save time, save money because you will not be wasting food and eat well-balanced, delicious meals the whole family will love, make sure to check out Home Chef. So good. Go to homechef.com slash Rachel and you'll actually save $30 off, $30 off your first purchase or click the link below. All right, I feel like we should eat. We should, we cooked it, so we should good. eat it. That's right, that's right.
All right, you guys, so we've talked about the health of your budget, the health of your nutrition, and of course, when people talk about health, working out comes to mind. So I brought my friend Joel in to help us out. Joel is a personal trainer, and you've been doing this for how long, Joel? Four years. Four years. Mm -hmm. Just, he's awesome. He actually trains a ton of people that we work with, and so we brought in the experts. Joel, I feel like I need to confess to you. P me and probably a lot of people watching, working out, I hate it. And so I get on these kicks where I've done it three times in my life. <laughs> these kicks three times. <laughs> where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do this. And when I do it, I go hardcore. I get up at like 4.30, I'm at the gym at five, and I work out and it's great, but it lasts for like three months. Is that normal? Very normal. People? That's the story that most people have. Okay, so how can we change that? How can we like make this a part of our lives? Like what's the number one thing? Well, that's the, that's the first thing. You have to make it part of your life. It's yes. not something that you can do short term and long term and see results if that's what you want. Yeah. So making it part of your life is important and also making it fit into your schedule is yes. important because most of us are busy. Yep. And we have a lot of responsibilities, kids, work, whatever it may be. Totally. So, and so being able to do stuff at home. Doing is it at key. home. AKA why we're at home, people, not at the gym, because we can't all make it to the gym. So you're gonna give us five easy workouts that we can do at home that are inexpensive. Mm -hmm. I wanna say easy to do. None of this is gonna be easy to do. I'm dreading this. All right, Joel, <sighs> give us the first workout. All right, so um, <laughs> the first thing that you can do at home, which doesn't require a lot, squats. Okay. Squats are real, okay. real easy to okay. do. They're really good for you. All right, so doing a squat, you wanna start with your feet about shoulder width apart. First thing you wanna do is kinda of kick your hips back a little bit. Squat down to a position, stand up. Go far down. How many should we do if you're just starting out? If you're just starting out, 10, 12, somewhere in there. Okay. okay. Three sets of those you could do. Okay, so about 10 of those, three sets. Good, yep. working the legs. Okay, what's working next? The legs. Um, next we'll work on push-ups. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Squats, I, I can do I can do a squat. A push-up, I don't know if I can do a push-up. Push-ups, okay. there's, there's modifications, there's okay, modifications to the push-up. Okay, show us the correct form. So, for a push-up, you know, basically you're gonna be like this, but the yep. modification is to make them a little bit easier yep, is to the knees. which is what I'll right? do. Your butt, your core, everything is tight. If that's too hard, you can actually do them on a wall. Oh. Putting your hands on the wall and just push off the wall. That's an easier step. So if that's too hard, start with the wall. Once you can do the wall, go to the knees. Once you can do the knees, then you can do the standard push-up from a plank position. Okay, and squats, push-ups. Did you see how I skipped the push-ups drill? See that, skipped it? So we're, we're, skip we're going me. on to exercise three. So the third thing is our lunges. Okay, okay. Um, right. Lunges are important to do them correctly. So basically, okay. many modifications you can do with the lunge. We'll just do standard. Mm -hmm. You step forward and you wanna make sure that your knee is over the ankle. And you can add weights to make them harder. Okay, Oof, yeah, we're not doing that. Not right now, Joel, not right now. <laughs> okay, exercise four is? Planks. Planks, okay. But at least you get to be on the ground. <sighs> so that's Jeez. good, right? Okay, okay. All right, so let's grab the mat. I would be a terrible person for a way. trainer to work with. No. I think I just complain all the time. Okay. Elbows and shoulders in line. Okay. Feet together. Okay. Squeeze the booty tight. Okay. And oh. basically, oh, you'll hold geez. that position. And that's, and that's abs mostly, right? It's like your core. Feeling, core. So okay. pretty much from here, okay. shoulders, arms, everything. Last easy exercise. Glute bridges. Easy. Okay. Glute bridges. No idea what you're saying. This okay. Is great. <laughs> so glute bridge, you're gonna lay down on your back. Okay. <sighs> your lower back stays attached to the ground. Okay. And then what you wanna do is you wanna raise your hips. Don't use your lower back. Okay. Raise your hips and you wanna Ideally, keep them in line from the knees to the shoulders. Just like oh, that. Oh, these, these, are, these, are, these aren't terrible. Making sure you're squeezing <laughs> your butt. Okay. That's and, important. And then, so that's working the butt. Oh, it's working the glutes. The glutes. The glutes. And the hamstrings as well. So good. And so doing these what? Like four times a week, doing a circuit? Three to four time. times a week, go through your circuit. Make it fun if you don't have time. When you go check your mail, do lunges out to your mailbox. Yes, just doing something. There I know, go. and that's yep. what's so bad, is Walk I'm so in. one of those people that's like all in or nothing, and I'm in like the nothing phase right now. Yeah. So just working it a little bit, making it just sure. part of your life. And you know, it's the little things that make the difference in the long run. Yes, so, so great. Okay, yeah. Yeah. guys, easy, cheap ways to stay healthy with our fitness. So, Joel, thanks so much. Thank you. So appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yep. Thank you, thank you. Sure.
The one thing in my life that I love to keep healthy is my closets, my clothes. Gotta love clothes. So I brought in the ladies from You Own the Look. Thank you guys for being here. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yes. Yes. Okay, so, so tell me about You Own the Look. It's a company you guys started. Tell me about it. We did. So You Own the Look is a subscription-based service that basically streamlines your online shopping experience. Okay. We scour the internet, we track down um, versatile pieces that are at affordable price points that give yes. you a high-end look without the high-end pri or high-price tag. We love that. It's yeah. great. Yeah. Speaking our language, <laughs> yeah. I love that. Exactly. So we have three looks today. Yeah. So look yeah. number one is it's our day to night look. Day to night look. Our day to night look is one of our most versatile looks. Is it this? So this first this outfit. Yeah. Okay. So this, oh, cute. This top is great for a woman on the go. Yes. Um, great for in the office or afterwards. We like to choose like fun and feminine pieces that are also functional. Love it. So, so next is casual. Um, so you'll see. So like what Callie was saying, a lot of the pieces. Y'all, I have this. Sure, is it great? Yes. Oh my gosh, I totally have this. A new day. It's one of our so favorite good. brands now at Target. We're so like everything funny. a new yeah. day. We want. Yes. It. yes. Yes. And you could wear this it's like so with cool. leggings or a cute pair of shorts like this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's so, so funny because this top I wear. I've worn to the office, uh -huh. and then we went to yeah. the lake the other weekend. And I threw and it on with a pair of shorts. Yeah, I really to wear it to like good. work out. So it's great. And then we so have good. this fun um, bucket bag from Forever Twenty One. Okay. Some fun. Sunglasses, oh, navy, yeah, I love them. Yeah, so cute. Four dollars. I mean, you just can't beat that. Yeah, no, no. so good. <laughs> Well, and sunglasses are one of those things. You lose. Oh, yeah. And I've spent, like, I've, like, invested. I've said, like, so before, I'm like, this is guilty. my investment piece, and I'm going to put all this money into it. Totally. You lose yeah. it. Oh, yeah, you totally lost it. And I kept it for, like, two years, two yeah. summers, and then the third summer yeah. I couldn't find no. it. So terrible. Exactly. So cheap sunglasses. Yeah, no, they're I a good show, too. I appreciate that. Okay, and the last look is? Weekend wear. Weekend wear. This is one okay. of our favorites. Yes. Okay. And this kind of ranges. So this could be one of our categories where we try to do like a night out look or yep. an athleisure look, which is our favorite. And see, oh, what I love favorite. about your philosophy is like, this together. I'm like, even you could put jeans with, with it, whatever. Jeans, but I'm yeah. like, but the look of the neutral, how it does. It, it just makes looks like look high nicer. end. Yes. yes, it does. Like, that's so cute. And see? so a lot of the stuff we look for, like what you'll see with the handbags is the hardware, because we feel like that dresses it up okay. a lot. So we look for like a lot of gold hardware. Yes. Make it look high end when it's really a very it. inexpensive piece. And then a fun weekend wear bag. Oh, this yes. Awesome. Zara. This nylon, yes. you can throw it on. Easy. Put your water bottle in it. Yep. It's great. Let things spill and it just wipes right exactly. out. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I feel, tell me if this is true, because this is like y'all's world. <laughs> it's like fashion. So I know, like, especially when I'm on maternity leave or I'm home with the girls, and I'm like, oh, I just like literally throw on like yoga pants and uh -huh, an old t-shirt yeah. and I'm around. And you're just kind of like, oh, you're going, going. But it's amazing when you're like, okay, I do have to dress up a little bit. I have right. to like put on a pair of jeans. God yeah. yeah. Like put on yeah. a pair of jeans, put some cute flats on, put a shirt. You just feel better feel about better. So do y'all find that's true? We believe that if a healthy self-confidence is so important in the way you exude yourself, whether it's in business, mm -hmm. whether it's in social events, yeah. or even just as a mom yeah. and a mm -hmm. wife. Yes. And feeling good in what you're wearing just will help you exude that self-confidence and health that you, know, you so badly need. And yes. we, our goal is to help people feel that way. Okay, thank you guys so much yeah, for coming. This is so yeah. good. So, so yes. good. Yelly shoes. Yes. <laughs>
Financial Peace University, and Every Dollar all together. So make sure to click the link in the description to check that out. And thanks so much to all of our guests. So many guests on today's show. Thank you, thank you so much for coming on and thank you all for watching. And make sure to subscribe because you don't wanna miss next episode that is all about minimalism. And we may or may not have the minimalists on the show. So remember you guys to take control of your money and create a life you love.